Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 120 of Daryl20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I am just chilling my company at the beginning, as we've been in the last uh, few episodes here. I'm upgrading uh, the restaurant to tier 3. Uh, so I got tier 2 restaurant, that's what that's what this one is. So a tier 2 restaurant looks like this. And I just kicked off an upgrade to a level 3 restaurant, and as you can see, Kai's getting to work, making it look even fancier. Even fancier. Wow, bricks instead of cobble. Looking fancy, Kai. Good job. Good job. Even Kai knows how to build better than me. Uh, and, and the university is still a work in progress. It's been really taking a long time to upgrade. But as we know, the university looks like, to me, thus far, one of the biggest buildings that there is. And there's just tons and tons of stuff to place. Um, the builder still has everything he, he needs. You know how sometimes the builder decides, like, oh, that's why I needed more. I lied. No, so far he's good. Um, but he's definitely adding like a nice second story here. Oh, that's pretty cool stuff. Look at that. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things happening up here. Look at this. This is cool. Neat. I like it. So definitely some work in progress stuff. I mean, it doesn't look finished by any stretch, right? Like definitely some things need to be tweaked. Oh, I like the windows though. Those look cool. Some flowers hanging around out front. Looking pretty nice and fancy. Um, the research is coming along pretty well. Uh, I think we've still got about 30 to 45 minutes left if we were to take a peek at our technology. Yeah, right about the 30 minute mark remains. So probably might be done by the end of this episode, depending on you know how much real life time it takes me to record it. And probably definitely ready to go next episode. Uh, so that's cool. So I just wanted to peek in and let you guys know like where the, the, the colonists are, what they're up to, how they're doing. Um, I'm wondering at, at what point should I worry about Sophia over here and her again. fishing? Because, you know, I feel like she's she's feeding a lot of people. Am I crazy? Or is she feeding a lot of people? It's also a level one fisher's hut. I don't know what upgrading it would do, but uh, you know, maybe we should look into that. Let me look at what upgrading the fisher's hut does, because I have no idea. Ah, so this is interesting. I actually don't think I want to upgrade the hut based on what I'm doing. Um, so upgrading the fisher hut will expand the range at which the fisher can fish, which is not a big deal, because, you know, she's good right there. Uh, but we'll also, uh, the higher the level of the fisher's hut, the more loot the fisher will be fishing out instead of fish. This includes prismarine and sponges. So that's cool, except your primary job right now is feeding the colony. Uh, I mean, we obviously do have a little wheat farm, uh, and we could we could bump this up to, like, we could add a potato farm over here, really, if we wanted to. You know, what we could do, probably relatively easy. Um, wasn't there another field doohickey there? Oh, I guess I only got one at a time. For some reason, I thought I had two fields. Um, but... So this guy's on what range? Three by three? Yeah, it seems pretty cool. Um, what I could have, right? So it's one, two, three. That. And then here, we could have another dude. Like that. Grab a quick bucket of water from the nearest lake. Right, so that would be one, two, three. And this guy could be potatoes, would be neat to throw in there. I mean, you know me, I like I like my potatoes. So let's give her some potatoes to work with. So inventory potatoes. Um, Avery's also going to work on that farm. Perfect. Looks like it automatically assigned, and that's neat. So I'm gonna put potatoes in there and she should, you know, start farming potatoes too. It's pretty cool. Like that. Looking good. Um, so that's what we'll do, right? We'll let that, I'm, I'm worried about food. I'm wondering if there's like, can you run out of food? I guess our villagers would start complaining if they were hungry, right? Um, hmm. Yeah, I would imagine that our villagers would start complaining if they were getting hungry. And I could always supplement with, you know, my own resources if I needed to. But I think once we get the sheep farm going, then that'll just be yet another source of food, right? Um, so that should be good. All right, Avery, you're doing a good job. Uh, how's your inventory here? Pretty good, but I think I should give you some diamond tools. 
because you're level three now, so you can you can totally accept Diamond Ho, which you know I don't want her to ever run out of. Uh, well, I mean, obviously I can't prevent her from completely ever running out. Well, I, I guess I can. I could have the blacksmith craft iron tools from all the mining that we've done. How's my mine doing, by the way? I don't think we've looked at our mine in forever. Whoosh! Oh, that's cool. Neato. Mine level 12, Y level 11, nodes 73. What is that? I don't know what the nodes number means. But wow, he's serious business with his mining down here, huh? Oh, that's cool. They kind of ran into lava and dealt with it. This is neat. I like it. All right, so let's uh, pop back home then, and we're going to get back to Nature's Aura. All right, guys, so as we can see, Nature's Aura, our trees have all converted over here to uh, golden leaves. I'm going to leave some of them up and running, uh, just, just leaving them alone. And I've already got, you know, almost a stack of gold leaf. So that's good times. What we want to start working on now is the natural uh, altar, which is our next major crafting component for this mod. And that will, uh, in addition to the, the, the tree ritual thing that we did last episode, kind of unlock a, a big piece of what this mod gets for us. Um, I was also flipping through a couple of pages, a couple of little gadgets that we can get, but not yet. We're still in the early just establishing ourselves phase of nature's aura. Uh, one thing I want to do note is on creating aura. Um, so as we start using up the aura in the area around us by doing uh, these rituals and with the altar, uh, we're going to start using up the aura in the world, and we want to be able to replenish that. Um, so we should note there's a few things that you can do to, to make aura, um, most of which we'll discover later. But by, by default, these devices do not have the creational strength to create aura beyond the range of the environmental eye. Um, once an amount of aura close to that is reached in the area, these creational devices will behave in different ways, some shutting off completely, others continuing their behavior without creating any aura in the process. Of course, they can be stopped manually using an aura detector or similar. Um, so that's pretty cool. And later on, this behavior can be changed using the creational catalyst, which is locked at the moment. So just note that you won't be able to get the aura too high early on. Um, and one of the ways to replenish aura, the most basic of it, is the ancient tree. Uh, once an ancient sapling is created, it will grow like a normal tree, but it, its leaves will start increasing the aura levels back to normal slowly. The tree, however, does not fare well during this process. As its leaves aura is drained into the world, the leaves start dying, leaving the tree bare if enough is drained. It should additionally be noted that while this tree looks especially beautiful in more hellish regions of the world due to the matching color scheme, it does not work outside of the overworld realm, as that is the only area where plants can thrive in the appropriate way. So in other words, the ancient tree doesn't work in the nether. Um, so this is the way to, to make it. We will be making one of these in a moment. But let's focus right now. Um, and I'm trying to keep up with the pages so that I know what I've seen and what I've done and what I need to do. So an ancient tree is on our to-do list, but the, the natural altar is where we're at, right? Um, so we totally want to get one of these guys going. So to do that, um, we're going to need a couple golden stone bricks. Um, and then we'll be able to make some stuff, right? Uh, so we're gonna need some wood, we're gonna need some some bricks, we're gonna need, it looks like eight golden stone bricks, right? Golden stone bricks. Okay, so that's gonna need brilliant fibers. We're gonna need about eight of these. We're gonna need bricks and we're gonna need oak wood. And I think there was a chisel brick in there somewhere, right? Uh, four of them, four chisel bricks. So that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Just get a few. Uh, let's decide where we want to put this. Do we want to put it to like the side of this thing? I mean, I could try, let's see, how does it look here-ish? Would that be cool? Like right, right there? Kind of like the looks of that. I do. It's nice and centered. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. Boom. That's where it's going to be. So let's clear out a little bit of this space. That looks pretty solid, right? Okay, now we need the oak and these guys are gonna go here. And then we're gonna need the chiseled bricks, the four of them. And I don't know if anything in particular needs to go under the altar, but I guess we'll find out if I did something wrong there. Uh, 
You're telling me I need to place nine more blocks, but I'm only seeing eight more blocks to be placed, so I feel like there is something special that goes under that altar. What goes under the altar? Oh, the altar itself. Haha, <laughs> never mind. It, uh, it's nothing special under the altar. Hooray! Complete! The altar itself is what we needed. So you can see um, it's it's draining from the aura. So if you look at the aura meter in the top left, it's not draining much, but the the aura is being drained. See, it just went down a little bit um, in this area, and it's filling up the charge in the natural altar itself. Well, that ain't bad. Yeah, see, it's definitely draining. So we should look into making those ancient trees pretty, pretty quickly. Um... Let's make one now. So it's going to be a sapling, a sugar cane, poppy, dandelion, gold leaf, wheat seed. Um, and I said I was going to get a thingy out here, and I didn't. So I'm going to do that off camera in a minute. So gold leaf, and what else was it? A sapling. Cool. Did I put away all my saplings? I probably did. All right. So you can see the orange rating. Again, not the end of the world by any stretch. Definitely need to come up with a way to automate this process. It would probably just be fun, right? Like, not a big deal, but it would be fun to automate. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six items. Grow the tree. And that should be cool. So yeah, look, our, our ore is dropping. I mean, it's not like a crisis by any stretch, but it's definitely dropping, right? The altar's charged though, uh, and the ore is gonna replenish itself a little bit automatically. But hey, look, there we go. And now we can plant nearby one of these dudes. And when we grow it, ta-da! We get a nice, beautiful tree. And what we'll find is the tree's leaves will start to decay and replenish the aura in the area. Cool? That's pretty neat. Also, I should note that there's a strong aura point right near my base over here. Uh, again, you can see the little particle effect showing up in the world. That's a good indication that there's a nice strong aura spot. But yeah, these ancient leaves will start to decay. And you'll see them literally decaying. Like, oh, there we go. Here's one. See the uh, the, the value on the, on the little thing there, the bar? It's dropping. So a couple of the leaves will start to decay. They'll turn brown, and then they'll eventually fall, like completely goodbye. And uh, that's what's up. Now I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, that, I'm pretty sure this is the case, they will drop saplings when they decay. So we probably want to grab those in some kind of chest, would be cool. So I'm going to plop a chest down, and that seems good to me. So now, any ancient leaves that decay and turn into saplings will... I'm going to drop my one sapling there. He'll get picked up. Um, so if we come back and we have more than one sapling in this chest, we know that it does, in fact, drop the saplings. I'm pretty... Uh, from 50-50 on whether that'll actually happen. I forget. Cool. Uh, so with that completed now, I'm going to go put this stuff away. And I'm going to go set up my receiver and my transmitter. I should just search for network because that's the trick. Network shows you all the things you need. Cool, cool, and cool. Easy peasy. And then we want wireless transmitter. There we go. And some range upgrades for them, please. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. So what I'm probably going to set up is like under the ground-ish. Uh, we'll have our receiver. Why am I hearing skeletons? Should I be hearing skeletons? I should not be hearing skeletons, right? Because we've got the, the thing going that prevents natural mob spawns. Which tells me, I wonder if there's a dungeon there. That could be the case. All right, so you're bound. So I'm going to plop a brick here. I thought I still had bricks on me. Must have put away the wrong stack. We'll go put the brick there in a minute. Cool. 
I do love me my wireless network stuff. Look, running wires is cool, and doing everything wireless is a little boring. But also, having wireless access is definitely better than not. Like, you need wireless access. You don't want to be bound to one area. Now, in what way are there skeletons? Aha! There is some kind of thing down here. Look at that. Called it. Oh, that's what's here. Okay. That's nifty. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the little treasure pots thing. Sweet. All right. I was just curious, like, how there were skeletons in the world when there shouldn't be any mobs anywhere nearby. Because of obvious reasons. All right, putting away junk. And let's come back in a minute. So now that we're back over here by our altar, you can see the, the aura is nice and stable. But again, the ancient trees are the most basic way of generating aura, and they will not get it above the halfway point. So now that the aura has been replenished to the halfway mark, uh, that's it. We're done. 100% complete, right? No more um, no more aura charging. It, it's, it's finished. It's not going to drain any more aura out of the leaves into the, into the chunks. Now I believe we want to click an iron ingot onto here and click that off and that will get us our infused iron ingot and this is going to be used for some crafting we're probably going to want to automate this in a smart way um there's ways to automate it right but don't just use a regular old hopper because hoppers equal you know pull whatever right so we need a filtered extractor um modular routers maybe would be a pretty simple and straightforward way to do that so what would be cool, I think, is um, to place like an input chest on the left, output on the right, um, and then we could have a item router that might be under the ground here, kind of hidden. So this should be the altar right here. So I'm going to place the router itself directly under the altar, okay? And then let's let's figure out what we want to do. So we want to do um a puller mark two to pull items out and a sender mark two um to send items right uh and that should be cool right so we're going to want to pull items out of the left chest put them into the altar and then pull certain items out of the altar and into the right chest and if we wanted to we could switch the right chest into being some kind of uh you know interface or whatever from refined storage so if we wanted to auto craft things you know that would be 100 percent doable uh that would be cool right so let's start with the basics for now and we'll kind of expand from there all right so let's start with pull and send right so you're gonna pull from this chest and send to that chest inventory right um and that i don't think we need to filter right anything i put in that chest belongs in that chest right um but then we're going to want to pull and send um from here to here and the puller should have a white list of infused ingots right and that should be cool now let's just see what happens if i put you know Four of these in here. Is it? Did it do all four at once? I see what happened. I see what happened. Yes. Okay. No. So we have to adjust that a little bit. Um, we should have you be whitelist on this as well right so both of these need to be whitelisted because we're using the same buffer um eh, that's actually tricky we might need a second router because what's going to happen yeah it's tricky so we only have the one buffer slot so when we pull the item from the chest um it's it's going to buffer a bunch of iron ingots here when the infused iron ingot is done crafting it's going to be stuck in the altar because the item router won't be able to pull it out because it's going to be back stuffed on iron. Yeah. 
So we're probably gonna want two item routers. One for one thing and the other for the other. So let's get another router here. Okay, and we'll do that. And that'll that'll be that'll be cool, right? So now, you know, we wind up with four of these, right? They'll buffer the three in here and they'll just chill until the crafting is complete and it can send another, right? Boom, boom, boom. And that looks like a good time, right? I like it. That works, right? Boom, boom, boom. So let's just validate. This is all behaving, right? So we should get four more infused iron at this thing. Awesome. That's pretty cool. I like it. Seems good to me, right? That'll do for now. And then we can just modify the filters as we have more things to put in there. And if we decide that we want to auto craft with refined storage, which is totally doable, we could easily turn this into an interface, you know, auto crafting system, right? We could easily do that. And if we wanted the chests underground, we could. Perfect, working beautifully. All right, so now that we have that stuff covered and automated, because you know me, I like to automate the things. Uh, let's take a look. Um, actually, I should fill in these dirt holes. That's one thing I miss about pocket storage is the ability to place blocks with it. Like Dank Null definitely had some cool abilities there. Having to grab it, open it, get the dirt out to place the dirt. Totally missed that feature of, uh, of, 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 of the dank storage mod, that was cool. See, look, the decayed leaves happen. So this is what happens. Um, the, the aura leaves decay eventually when they run out of aura and they'll drop into saplings, I think. Or not, I guess we'll find out. Well, a lot of stuff has opened up now on account of the fact that we just crafted that, that metal ingot thing, right? There's more options for creating aura. Uh, there's more options for harnessing aura. Uh, there's more options for natural items, and there is a handful more mechanical devices. So that's all pretty cool. Nice. What I'm going to do is glance through a few of these and give you guys the gist of what they do. So there's a crumbling catalyst, which basically can improve the output of certain things. Looks pretty neat. Um, so you can turn like, you know, cobble into sand. Oh, you can double gold leaf production. That's kind of cool. That might be a thing we might want to do. Um, is there a multi-block for this or is it literally just a thing? On top of any of the four lower golden stone bricks. Oh, blocks around the altar and then placing the ingredient on the altar as usual. Oh, that's cool. So it's an augment to the natural altar. So you literally place it on one of these four and it lets the natural altar do more things. Kind of just like the, the catalyst from Batania, right? It, it augments the abilities of the altar. That's kind of neat. I might do that just, just for the golden leaf thing because doubling golden leaves would be neat. All right, so if I want to make this cool crumbling catalyst dude, uh, we're going to need a token of anger to make that happen. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to need some infused rock, which is super simple. It's just stone in the altar. And this requires a natural altar. There are other types of altar. Uh, which we will find out in, in, in a bit, but yeah. Uh, but however, to make the token of anger, we're going to need some bottled ghosts. Bottled ghosts sounds like a good time to me. I'm pretty sure that's just nether-based bottling, um, bottling cork in the nether. So let's see if that works now, or if I need to do something else before I can get those. I guess we'll find out. So I'm just going to bring a bottle of cork into the nether, find out if that's groovy. <laughs> Spooky, scary skeletons. There it is, bottle ghosts. Beautiful. So that seems pretty cool to me. So now that we've got our bottle ghosts, we should be cool. Let me let me take a quick nap here. Um, just so we have a little bit of daylight to work in. There we go. So we're gonna throw our bottle ghosts on here. And what else required for the anger? So we're gonna need gunpowder, magma, blaze, and ender pearl. Gunpowder, magma, blaze, and under ender pearl. And out of habit, I was about to go back over there, but I'm like, oh right, I can do this now, right? Gunpowder, magma, blaze, 
and ender pearl. Nice. Boop, 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 boop. Cool. Uh, and again, still, still figuring out how I want to. I want to do something cool here, and I, th I wonder if modular routers will allow me to do a specific pattern. It might, I know it can place blocks. I'm just wondering if it can place them like one router could do all of these. That might be doable. That might be doable. I'm gonna have to investigate. I'm gonna have to investigate. It's, it's possible. It's possible. I'd really like. I'd really like even more automated to just have them always there. So like, as soon as they get removed by the thing, automatically place another batch. Wouldn't that be neat? I'd be all about that. All right, cool. Hey, there is your anger dude. Sweet, so check. Now crumbling catus, gold stone bricks, right? Um, is going to need some of you. And then we're also going to need flint. Okay, and the token of anger, and a piston. Okay, so piston, flint, token, goldstone, and fuse block. Boop, boop, and boop. I'm thinking modular routers might be the solution here. I just need to, I don't have time to work on it this episode because we have to wrap up pretty soonish. Uh, and I want to get this component complete, but we'll probably look at it next episode and see if that's automatable with, with modular routers. I do like that mechanic, it's super cool. I wonder how that works. I'm trying to imagine how that would work. Like there's gotta be a tile entity in here somewhere, right? I wonder, I wonder if these guys are tile entities? Because there's no, he could be hooking into the tree growth event. That's probably what he's doing. When a tree, the tree growth event, I guarantee, uh, that's probably what he's doing. There's an event that fires when a tree grows, I would think. I would imagine there's a tree growth event. Uh, so then, so let's, let's, let's try this out, right? So normally we put this here on the natural altar. It won't let me put it there. But if I put a crumbling catalyst on top of one of the four golden stone bricks, I can now do this and then boom, I'm getting four of these or no, it looks like I only got two. One becomes two. Oh, because it already moved two. Okay, yeah, no, I set that up, I forgot. Um, down here, I anticipated this need and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a stack upgrade for modular routers. Um, for the polar. That sound like a plan? Yeah, that should be cool, right? So now, check this out, right? We put eight of these in here. We should get 32 dust. I already did the whitelisting, so that's cool. Yep, four at a time, beautiful. For a second there, I was like, it didn't work because it gave me two, but it's because it had pulled two out and I clicked it after and just pure luck. But that's neat. I like that. I wonder if there's other upgrades to this and that that augments, um, you know, the the capabilities of this thing. Uh, so there's a transmutation catalyst. It looks like, and that's kind of cool. You can make dragon's breath with it. Ooh, that's awesome. But you need crimson altar, and a crimson altar is this multi-block in the Nether. It's cool though. I like it. Can make quite a few things. Yeah. <gasps> Quartz into Prismarine. This may be one of the few ways you can make Prismarine in this pack. It may be the only way you can make Prismarine in this pack. Look at that. If we got a transmutation catalyst, we can make Prismarine without having to go hunt those guardian dudes. That is that is yes. That's like one thing major gap that we don't have because of actually additions. Remember actually additions gave you the quartz to prismarine recipe? Like now you actually go hunt the dudes like a little bit of a hassle. Not the guardians are like the worst thing in the world, but it's it's extra hassle, you know. I wonder if there's like a guardian farm you can set up. I bet there is one. I've never tried that. Might be worth doing. 
All right, guys, I think that's wrapping up point for the episode. Um, so let me jump over to my colony real quick just to peek in. How's uh, how's how's the upgrading of the place going? Oh, we're getting there-ish. Required resources zero. Are you done? You are done. Hey, university's complete. Nice. Did I miss that notification? We had a raid that happened. You know, there's been a lot of up and down time in this in this so far. But wow, look at this place. Looking good. All right. And our technology research is complete as well. So I'm going to start the Dyer's Hut uh, for sure. So we just need some poppies, uh, which hopefully I have a stack of. We have literally just barely enough poppies. That is cool. So I would like my Dyer's Hut. We need a tier three flower shop first. All right. So we'll get to that next episode. For now, Dull20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. More Nature's Aura and uh, other kinds of cool mine colony type stuff in the future. All right, guys. Take it easy.